Hi folks, the Filipina Pea here. Today I'm gonna give you a bird's eye look at something you might not have seen on any other channel as I explain the different types of Filipinas, not only by where they live geographically, but by their personality types, education levels, what they're looking for in a partner, and where they can be found. I've noticed that every time I say anything about Filipinas or foreigners, I invariably get comments saying, you shouldn't generalize, all people are all different. Or I'll get someone who says, my Filipina girlfriend isn't like that, so you're wrong. Well, let me ask you this. How can you possibly say anything about a group of people without generalizing? Unless you're talking about one individual. And if I only talk about a few specific people, what good does that do for the majority of you folks out there that want to know what it's really like here? If you lived in the U.S. and I asked you to describe the people there, what could you say? Americans are black, white, Latino, Asian, male, female? The most you could say was that they all breathe oxygen. And if you tried to go further than that, you'd be speaking in general terms. So in this video, yes, I will be generalizing and there will be plenty of people who don't fit the patterns that I'm describing. But that doesn't make the pattern untrue or invalid. The people of the Philippines are a unique example because of our geography, history, and the fact that we don't travel as much as the people in many other countries. So our traditions and even languages remain somewhat isolated from island to island, giving each area a different flavor. There are places in the Philippines that are more welcoming to strangers. There are places that are xenophobic. And there are 183 different languages used here. So it makes it particularly hard to give sweeping generalizations that cover every Filipino. But that doesn't mean we can't uncover some useful truth about the people here. In other words, while some foreigners may consider us to be a homogenous group, there are a lot of different types of Filipinos. So how can we possibly describe what Filipinos are like? Well, despite our regional differences, our economic reality has created some distinct categories we can describe. Some of these are true in all countries, and some of these are products of the unique conditions here. So let's talk about the 50 Shades of Filipina. As I said earlier, because of the relative isolation of the islands and people's general reluctance or inability to travel, we have different areas of the country that have reputations for specific traits. Sometimes, even just hopping from one island to another makes you feel like you're in a neighboring country. So here are some different regions and what the people there are generally like. First, in the mountainous area of northern Luzon are the Ilocanos, a simple, hardworking people who tend to be appreciative and thrifty. They're from Polynesian ancestry, and they tend to be shorter folk who are very superstitious and traditional. While they're fairly welcoming to foreigners, they take courtship and marriage very seriously, requiring the approval from both parents before a union will be accepted. Then we have the Cebuanos of Central Visayas, a jovial, party-loving people with a reputation for being sweet and caring partners. They're mostly devout Catholics with a lot of Spanish blood, and English is widely spoken there. Typically, they love foreigners, and although they're family-oriented, they have a more casual attitude towards dating and relationships. Next are the Ilongas of the Western Visayas. They're known for their jealousy and possessiveness, but also for being faithful and true to their partners. A very charming and sweet people, you often can't tell if an Ilonga is mad at you because of their lyrical voices. They're more religious and family-oriented. They take marriage very seriously and are not into casual dating. Then there's the Boholana, southeast of Cebu in central Visayas. They're known for their beautiful petite women, who are typically dark-skinned Moranas. They're conservative reserved people who tend to also be very jealous around their mates. They welcome foreigners and Bohol is home to many mixed couples. 
Next, we have my people, the Warai of the Eastern Visayas. We have a reputation for being feisty, hard-headed, and we don't shy away from arguments. We were known as fierce warriors with darker skin and Spanish blood. We talk really fast, and if you hear us having a conversation, you'll think we're arguing. Our women tend to be flirtatious and outgoing. And although marriage is the ultimate goal, the local women are fine with foreigners and casual dating. And then there are the Davoenyo of Southern Mindanao, a very conservative, traditional, lighter-skinned people who take courtship very seriously. There's not much casual sex going on there, and women are expected to remain virgins until marriage. Although Mindanao has many Catholics, it's also home to the majority of the Philippines' Muslim population. And finally, we have Manila, in southern Luzon where you'll see a lot of light-skinned people with Spanish blood. They're often taller than the average Filipino, but sometimes heavier too due to their lifestyle and diet. The residents have the reputation of being more hard-working, career-driven, highly educated, and live in a more fast-paced, materialistic world. In this society, foreigners are also welcome, and casual dating is common. Now, there are a lot more regions I could name, but those are some of the main ones that you might find interesting if you're planning to visit or find a mate here. But what about the Filipinas themselves? Our attitudes can't be based solely on where we live, right? It also has a lot to do with our socioeconomics. So now I'm going to describe the four most common situations you'll find with a Filipina. First, we have the it girls. They come from wealthy families, often from mixed couples, and their parents are politicians, businessmen, people in the entertainment industry, and other higher tiers of society. Mostly found in bigger cities like Manila and Cebu, they've often received their education overseas. They're career-minded, and although they eventually want to marry, they're not in any hurry to tie the knot or have children. Often heavily westernized and very fluent in English, they'll casually date successful, attractive foreigners, but only if they're pretty close in age. Good luck dating an it girl. Then there are the upper class women, professional women such as lawyers, architects, and doctors. You'll find them scattered all across the country in both the cities and provinces, educated mostly here in the Philippines. They're usually fluent in English and have long-term relationships in mind. Foreigners are sometimes not their first choice, but they usually date educated, successful ones around the same age or a little more. Next, we have the working-class women. Call center agents, department store managers, bank tellers, government employees, and cashiers. They've usually received at least a bachelor's degree from a school here in the Philippines and you'll find them everywhere. Typically, they're family-oriented, marriage-minded, and want children. They're not particularly aware of Western culture, and their English skills are pretty basic. More often than not, they're happy to date older foreigners without regard to education level or economic success. Their important requirement is that their partner is a loving, loyal man. And finally, Making up a large majority of the population are the unemployed or self-employed like sari-sari owners, students, single mothers, street vendors, and the unemployed who live with the family, found everywhere, but mostly in the provinces. These people have very limited English skills, usually uneducated or with minimal schooling. They tend to be more naive, jealous, superstitious, and have a simplistic understanding of the world. Almost without exception, they're traditional, marriage-minded, and want children at a very young age despite an inability to afford them. Many of these women actually prefer sizable age gap relationships because they represent stability and security and they might even be under pressure by their parents to find a foreigner to provide for them. So there you have it, folks.
I'll look at the types of people you'll find in different areas and situations here in the Philippines. But before I close, I'd like to address the foreign viewers who might be watching. There are literally millions of wonderful women here. Women that will love and care for you, be loyal and faithful to you, and be the companion you always wanted. Most of them are just looking for the exact same thing from you. If you treat us with respect as a real partner and make the relationship about love and commitment, you can create something wonderful here that might be impossible for you in the West. I hear some people talk about broken down old foreigners coming here and using their meager pensions as an economic advantage over poor and helpless women who have no choice but to accept their offers. Well, if you're coming here to find a woman as a sex object that you can dominate and manipulate, who's too naive to realize what's going on, then obviously, I have no sympathy for you, and I beg you to please just stay home. Fortunately, the vast majority of mixed marriages and partnerships that I've encountered aren't like that at all. I see happy couples all the time, with the women being treated better than they've ever known before. I personally have a number of friends in age gap relationships who are married to foreigners that they wouldn't trade for all the gold in the world. Sure, most of the men who come to this country are older. So what? It's just an economic reality that you're probably not going to be able to make money here. So you have to have some sort of savings or pension in order to stay. And nine times out of ten, that means you're older and retired. Again, so what? Most of you subscribers that I've had a chance to talk with, that have become my friends, aren't broken down, horny old men that don't give a crap about their partners. Quite the opposite. You seem like very decent, normal guys that are often just looking for a second chance at happiness. And you'll make some women here incredibly happy. Now prove me right, okay? Well, I'll be back again in a couple of days, folks, with something new and different. And there's one thing you can count on. I'll be telling it like it is. Till next time. Now I'd like to take this time to clear something up. A little while ago, I did a video on the transsexual scene here in the Philippines. For some odd reason, I got quite a few questions asking if that means I'm transsexual myself. It's not that I'd be offended if someone honestly thought I was trans, which I'm not. It's the logic, or lack thereof, in asking the question that I find offensive. If I do a story on cam show girls, does that mean I'm a cam show girl myself? And since I did a video about call girls, I guess I'm one of those too? But oh well, I'm about to put the stupid questions to rest. And I have a person here tonight with impeccable credentials and honesty. I've asked Gracie to perform an examination and report her findings right here, right now. Whenever you're ready, Gracie. Okay, let's have a look. What the heck? What's this? Oh my god! We're gonna need a bigger boat. By the way, 100% female. See? I told you. Just one last thing before you go. If you think about it, I'm kind of like your bartender. Listening to your comments and questions, giving you advice when I can, and brewing up some intoxicating content for your enjoyment. The only thing I ask in return is a small tip in the form of a thumbs up on this video, subscribing to my channel, sharing this video with friends, and hitting the notification bell so you know when your next round has been poured. I promise, it'll only take 10 seconds to do, and your tip will make my day. You wouldn't want to shaft your bartender, would you?
And for last call, why not enjoy some of my other videos too? See you real soon!